Nigerians are reacting to the brutality of these officers. Joining me on the program this evening is a legal practitioner and also a PR expert, Jide Ologume. Thanks for joining us on the program this evening. Public Affairs Analyst, Cheson Okwade, thank you so much for joining us on Political Lens. It's a pleasure to be here this evening. What's your reaction concerning this protest going on uh, in the country at the moment? Let me start with you, uh, Cheson Okwade. Do you see an end to SARS? Yeah, uh, uh, I had opportunity to talk to the convener of SARS, uh, Sega Links, uh, Chef Gwanosaya, who happens to be a very childhood friend. And uh, you see, when the NSAS uh, stuff came up, it was to bring uh, a reform to the police setting, considering the brutality that they actually bring into people. See, they, they, they have the good side of them, which is to secure people and uh, match up with uh, the hardened criminal that they are set up to be, which are armed robbers. But we've discovered that uh, the model of a brandy of this uh, unit is quite uh, arbitrary in the sense that uh, they don't wear clothes, they dress shabbily, you know, they, they, they look like the people that they actually want to, uh, harass. to harass. Okay. You, you, you can't really identify them easily. Harass or arrest? No, the people they want to arrest, okay. you know, they, they look, they just dress anyhow and it's pretty difficult when they just ask you to park to identify whether they are law enforcement agency or the other people that we are actually talk, talking about. Also, when you look at the aspect of the, the, their, 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 their vehicles, their vehicles are not uh, branded. You it's just, they pick up on any vehicles on the road, even commercial vehicles, and being used, they stop the person and say, you're not going to work for the old day. So you discover that when you look at everything holistically, uh, they, they, they have a mission, but the mission is not just in line with what we have. And they move all out after the youths that are, you know, uh, carrying out their daily uh, doings. I've, I've had opportunity in Abuja to uh, I had a challenge with them in Abuja. Just walked out of my hotel room and was just to take a stroll after finishing a meeting uh, in Abuja. And people just parked beside me because I wore a short necker and they said I'm a Yahuba. I was like, brother, my ID card did everything and they said, no, it's, gonna, it's not going to be. Uh, well, I explained everything, but I parted with something. I had to call Sega that particular night. So when you look at the way and manner, they just arrest. At, even when you explain, they are not just after it. They feel that you add some of those means of identification that is supposed to set you aside as uh, just to defend yourself. They are out to exploit. What we are actually, for me, they have a mission. Because when you look at the other side, they... Um, are the ones that can face the criminal that we are talking okay. of and long. But they run, they leave that particular one, run after the youth, run after the uh, Yahoo boys, and harass innocent citizens that are just on their way. An average size guy looks at you and feels that because you are driving a good car, not even knowing what you're doing, you must be a Yahoo boy. And but that must just Shazo, come to an end. Let, let me put you on the pause at the moment. Let, let me quickly get the view of uh, GD Ologun. Because you said earlier, because a part of their bodies of Parandi is that they are to act covertly. And um, uh, during that particular formation, they, they, they can drive uh, vehicles without plate numbers. These are part of the formations of uh, the SARS. Uh, well, GD, do you see an end to SARS or a reformation? You know, let's take it from the mode of operation. Okay. That is strategic. In nature. You mentioned that SARS was formed in 1992. Correct. But why? Because in that year, a colonel, Rindan, was killed at a checkpoint in Lagos. And the military went to town dealing with policemen. Some of them ran away, some even resigned from the police. But eventually, there was a compromise between the police and the military. And that was when the Commissioner of Police, Dan Ladi, formed EFSAS to go on the ground because the rate of crime increased in Lagos then. And eventually when the two came to an understanding, it was formally established as a unit in the you know, crime <clears throat> investigation and intelligence department of the police. There were existing, in fact, there were about 14 units and they had to come up officially. 
And if you look at the account in Wikipedia, SARS has been effective in dealing with crime. But just like you know that everything subject to use is exposed to abuse. And so I think what has happened now is an abuse. And we also need to look at the foundation of that, which may not be divorced from the macro uh, environment where generality of agencies and practitioners have found themselves. So you find a situation where they probably feel the authority they have should be deployed to make ends meet. All right, which is, and the way they operate has compounded it. You don't even know sometimes who they are, where they are coming from. And I've had to question some of them. And they told me that those they go after, sometimes they have to be like them, to blend with them. Because one of their responsibilities is to investigate, detain, prosecute. So in the course of investigating, they may just go to an eatery or to a joint and blend in there, get the relevant information. But the basic issue here now is that abuse. And it has dented the image of our country. Because right now, if you Google SARS, the reports we have about Nigeria, they are now associated with extortion. With, in fact, some of them are associated by insinuation with kidnappings, with snatching of ballot boxes. And that is the image and perception aspect of it. So definitely, we've come to the point where the units of the police that should help carry out the vision and the mission of the police generally is creating crisis for the police. But that's not to say they have not been effective. And if you look at the vision and mission of the Nigerian police, it is to help in creating an enabling environment for national development, economic prosperity. And how do you do that? By being the friend of the people. Okay. By ensuring safety. But right now, Nigerians are saying, no, that you are no longer functioning in your vision and mission. In fact, you are becoming danger to us. And if you look at the killings and things like that, I think it's a worrisome development. And my concern really has gone beyond answers. I have said it personally, that with the circumstances in the country, the government may be watching the radicalization of Nigerians who are beginning to mobilize, okay. to question the accountability of the government because it may move from answers to let there be prosperity in Nigeria. For instance, I am interested in hashtag end poverty. So the government must for once listen to the people. And that's one of the issues why Nigerians are coming out now, that if you won't listen to us and do the needful, then we engage you at this level. And it has become a global embarrassment. And these are Nigerians who are saying, okay, if you want to shoot, you saw that video, uh, was it in Delta State? In or Delta. Okay. That, yeah, if you want to shoot, shoot. Mm. Go ahead uh, and shoot. Uh, are you saying uh, that um, uh, the government should, should listen to the voice of, the, of these people uh, going on the street protesting that they should end SARS? You see... Is it, is, is it an end to SARS or a reformation? That's what... We Protest is an extension of agitation. It's like, you see, even in the Bible, you know, God says, ask, mm. ye shall receive. receive, seek, you will find, knock, it shall be opened unto you. So there are three stages <laughs> in Matthew 7, 7. Mm. So when you ask and you don't receive, you seek and you don't find, you begin to knock. And so Nigerians are at the point of knocking now. This is not the first time. Mm. Recently, the government came up and said we, 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 we reform. Some directives were given. But do they comply with these directives? Mm. And to make it very critical, even the presidency, okay. represented by some government officials, and in particular the vice president, mm. is also crying foul of the activities of SARS. Now, we are not questioning the effectiveness. But we are looking at the abuse of office. And if you look at section 15, subsection 5 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended, it says that the state shall abolish corruption and abuse of office. So do we wait until more Nigerians are killed? Because 
look at what happened in uh, Oshun State. Even though I, I, I'm I doubt if it was directly about SARS, when the Joint uh, Tax Force, JTF, pursued some young ones to their yeah, death. To their death on the road. And under the Constitution, I think Section 36, we have the presumption of innocence. So even if you are alleging that I am a criminal, you investigate me, you prosecute me before a committed judiciary. And unless I am convicted of that crime, you cannot claim I'm a criminal. So I have the, you must prove your case beyond unreasonable doubt. So right now, what we are having are, you know, extrajudicial killings, killings in the harassment, brutality. And it should not in any way be condoned, particularly in a country where the state of insecurity is so high. And that's why people are saying, government, okay. play your roles. Because section 14, subsection 2 of Nigerian Constitution 1999, as amended, says that the security and the welfare of the citizens shall be the primary purpose of government. And when that primary purpose is being eroded, then you expect the government to do something about it. And if the government appears to be looking in other directions, that's when you begin to have the protest. And some of us are warning, because public relations by the Mexican statement is the art and social science of monitoring trends, predicting their consequences, and recommending actions that can be taken to project the interests of the stakeholders. Right now, there is what we call reinforcement theory in industrial psychology. It may move from NSAS to another thing. So we must quickly move now, to need, particularly when the budget is out now, and we are being told another recession is in the corner. So the, 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 the more pressured the people are, okay. the more they are likely to come out. Let, let, let me quickly bring in just, just Okwande. Well, you, you have Judy clearly about uh, this issue of NSAS and the protests going on uh, at the moment. If this set of people are taken away uh, from uh, the highway in patrolling, don't you think or feel the act of criminality will increase, especially in places like uh, Lagos and some other states? Uh, l like I said when I was saying, uh, given my opening brief, uh, it's the reformation of that unit that I feel we need to pursue their model of operandi, the abuse of office, as said by Gide, the harassment of in, uh, innocent people on the road. And, uh, you know, the, the, the fact remains that these people don't follow due process. The fact remains that if you, like, they, they are to act as uh, undercover in the intelligence gathering. Even if you suspect anybody, I don't think the next, even if he's putting up uh, 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 Resistance. I don't think the first thing you should do is to cock the gun. You see, we are, we are in this part of the world that harassment to civilians are just all over the places. If you even suspect that someone is a criminal, is a criminal, you are trained to defend yourself without killing the person. Because if you kill the person, how are you going to get the vital things? Like he said, if that case needs to go to the judiciary, you've killed the major person to give an insight to the gate, to the case, and a direction. So you discover that what I will suggest, of which I believe the uh, NSAS convener was saying, which was able to uh, achieve with the reformation, with the reforms that they brought recently, though has not been implemented, is to reform their operation. Let them reform the operation, the way and manner they address. Is, you see, when you go outside this country, if a policeman harasses you, you feel like he should, harass, he, should, he should talk to you the more. They don't harass. They talk to you with courtesy, and they are pushing you even to, to your grade. But here, the first thing is to harass, see a policeman slap somebody on the road, you know, cock the gun, eat him, or uh, an armless person that does not. So I feel they should reform what they do because... Sincerely speaking, because of the pressure in the land and the level of insecurity, we need them on the road. But the way and manner they address people, possibly... They carry arms and ammunition on the road? Or they just go on the road without arms? Yeah, well, you know, they, they, it, it should come in, in you're, stages. You're suggesting a reform now? Yeah, it should come in stages. Okay. When you are coming and you are just there, there, there can be a reinforcement. You don't come out just with gun as if we are in a war zone. You should look for a way 
like they said, they are to mingle with people. Just and I'm sure. The first century. Yeah, they, they, have, they have preventives. Okay. They have things that they can use to protect themselves, even when they are to be attacked. So it's not the first step to come out with God, intimidating people. You should come, talk to people, ask questions, investigate issues. And when you discover that it's going to be on the outside, you can reinforce. But not just come in wholeheartedly on the road. Stop somebody on the road and the next thing is to cock a gun, ask him to go. It's not done. There are polite ways to address citizen because we are there to protect us and not to harass us. Where lies individual role in all of these developments? Because if you are saying they are there to harass, to intimidate Nigerians, where lies the role of you and I? Because when you see a police officer carrying the gun that can uh, pull the trigger any moment, what is your own role uh, if you are being aroused? Do you shout at that person or you keep calm to explain be better? Yeah, I, I think we've said this time to that number and I got the knowledge of this from uh, uh, a superior police officer. He said when you are at a checkpoint, the so-called uh, recruits on the road that first aroused you are trained to, to gear up your anger. So what you do is to... Mm. Not to react, even when they're trying. But we see they, a lot they, of people, just a moment, we yeah. see a lot of people reacting, saying, I know my rights, you don't have... At that me. point, he said, when you want to prove your right, okay. look at the most senior. That some of their boss that sit in the vehicle, even at that checkpoint, when you engage them, they will not give back. But situation where they have actually hit the, the, the system, and they are making you to say all sorts of things, if care is not taken, they use your words against them. Uh, they use your words against you okay. and they start dealing with you. But situation where you are being harassed, you know, I, I've seen a situation, somebody was asking me a question and on the road, I, I kept quiet. And when if he said, but I'm asking, I said, are you true? So that I can talk. And when he looked at it, the next question was, are you a lawyer? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> I, I said, well, <laughs> are you, I just want to clarify if you're true with your question. Yeah. It was marvelous because every word he was saying, Say, look at this small boy. How old are you? Man. You know, because of the young style's small stature. Okay. How old are you driving this kind of car? You must be a rogue. You must be. And I didn't even want to tell you what. He said, but I'm talking to you. Where do you? I said, I want you to finish what you're saying, sir, so that I can respond. But do you know that the person that led that thing was watching us from behind? And when it was done, I said, well, this is my... I do you know the funniest thing? I gave my ID card, my driver's license, my particular, reading the same name. And the man is still asking me, who am I? Well, well, but the senior officer was saying, <laughs> let, let me bring in Jide. Jide, you're a PR expert. Yeah. You, you, you had a question I asked earlier, relationship. Uh, how we communicate with uh, these uh, men uh, uh, well, on the streets as police officers. What do you make of this development? I, I think there's a distinction between reaction and response. Okay. And response has more to do with emotional intelligence, which he demonstrated. He understood that this person is under pressure, all right, and I need to get out of it. I found myself in a similar situation. I did not even have an identity card to give. Okay. The guys saw me coming with a flashy car. SARS, two of them, they jumped on the road, stopped me, and I stopped. They looked at me, young boy, <laughs> <laughs> and said, who are you? I introduced myself. Where is your ID card? I said, I don't carry ID card. You know, they saw my people, oh, you're a lawyer. And when they checked everything and nothing, they said, give us something. <laughs> <laughs> so, because basically, mm. I hardly introduced myself as a lawyer to them. I listened to them. And I may say this on air. Psychologically, what I do quite a number of times is that if I see your name tag, I call you by name straight. And that demobilizes. Yeah. Mm. So that's jump starts. And engagement because I've had some of them we ask is it because you are a lawyer are you you know so the, the country is tight majority of people whether they are in government or we, we are under pressure okay so and when you now find those who are armed it's like they are prepared for battle oh, yeah so it matters how you engage them I hardly have issues with police I must comment I I find it smooth with them you know, but because that is because, because of you have the, the way understanding. I have okay. chosen to relate with them. And we need to look at no, it but, also. But that should be the normal. Exactly. Some okay. of them don't even, you know, they are, sometimes I look at them, they are under the sun, 
they are under the rain. You know, so we, we need to holistically look at the way we operate in this country. And there is an issue we need to mention. There have been documented reports that sometimes even their boss set target for them. That as you are going, you must bring this amount. <laughs> it's on record. It's not my words. After all, a senator confronted the former Inspector General of Police in Nigeria for collecting money from private sector, and those things went under the carpet. So we, if, if you travel from Lagos to Benin, for instance, between Shagamu Interchange the, the, the number of checkpoints. and Ore, you are likely to encounter about 25 checkpoints, if I'm not exaggerating. But did it, why is it that some of these police officers don't even obey a simple instruction? Because when you have a new IG, the first instruction is that no to any form of checkpoint. After one month, we see they have them back. To checkpoints. I, I call that crocodile tears instructions. How do you mean? Those instructions are hardly sincere. I don't want to speak in absolute terms. It's just to impress the people that now we are here. Just yeah. like the way we have political promises. If I were to flow by the political promises I received in 2014, by now Nigeria should be the third richest country in the world. But you know, before we move on to <laughs> but this before we move on to other issues, are other issues are, are on the program. But um, the re up. recall that August 14, 2018, the acting uh, um, uh, president then, uh, Yemion Shimbadjo, ordered that uh, with immediate effect, the overall of uh, the controversial police unit course has following reports of human rights uh, violations. Mm -hmm. The acting uh, president ordered the inspector general of police as a then Ibrahim uh, Idris to reform SARS as well as carrying out independent uh, investi investigation after several complaints. What has gone wrong with all these reforms? It's, uh, in, in manner, what I've seen about this country is that we have good documentation of things. When it comes to implementation, it becomes a problem. You will see good, beautiful write-ups put together by good brains, but when it's out to implement it or carry out that detailed instructions, it becomes a problem. Like he said, that IG given an instruction. IG will not leave Abuja to come to Ondo Binyore. There's an area commandant who is supposed to listen, mm. if at all, to the IG. There is a, a, a DPO who takes instruction from the area commandant. So where do we go from here? So what we need to do is, if instructions are given, can we follow it to letter? Can we start taking holding responsible area commandants where they cover, DPOs where they cover, the uh, uh, small police post, whosoever at them, where issues happen. Take it from the board. So when instruction is coming from above, you download it to the next CADA and you follow to letter. So wherever anybody misplaced that which you have given, such people should be dealt with, okay. either to leave the police force, when they don't take instruction to you. But we find out that, uh, like you said, people give instruction to impress the citizen that they are coming on board, but do other things behind, not following what they have actually said. Jide, where do we go from here before we move on to other issues? Let's be sincere. Nigeria needs a holistic approach. I, I recall in the area of instructions that the president of this country, whom I respect so much, has given instruction to the chief of army staff and those fighting the Boko Haram to take them out. And these guys appear to be getting stronger, you know, because we are only de dealing with the technical defeat. So, are we advocate sincerity? Okay. And we must look at the economy, the social structure of this country, the value, value system, the welfare system. When was the last time you went into a police barracks and see the conditions under which they live? It may amaze you that you go to a police station and you have to pay for okay. the, the, the sheets, the, the statement sheets, sheets. Statement okay. sheets, different kinds. So they are under pressure. As a researcher, I've sat with some of them to listen to their complaints. Let me give you one that, that really touched me. I was in a high place in the police and no electricity. They had to contribute money to go and buy fuel. And I saw lighting, and I asked them, so you don't have a generator here? They looked at me and laughed. And the generator for the generality of people. And one of them said, sir, next time you see policemen, check their footwear, whether they are uniform. Hmm. So they are going through stress. See, so if they must compete, 
and perform under global standard. We must make those provisions available unto them. So the, the, the pressure, and in Nigeria, we say we want to make ends meet. And I keep asking this question, why should ends meet, my brothers? Okay. Let ends be ends. <laughs> so <laughs> let's be sincere, we, we let's their, deploy their, their our resources. Funds. Exactly. Sometimes you see those vehicles, you almost cry for your nation. You see, so they are under pressure. They are under pressure. And let's bring in meritocracy. A lot of issues. And for quite a number of times, the sense of safety is not there. We have not recovered from how when a kingpin kidnapper was arrested, some soldiers accosted and killed Good. trained policemen of Nigeria. And today, the matter is just dilly-dally. So we need to be sincere. <laughs> we need to be sincere in the country.